I'm playing The Room 3, which is an entirely mouse-driven adventure game. It requires you to push, pull, and turn objects. I'm playing with the DualShock 4's motion support on the comfort of my couch, and it's fun. This video will walk you through how to set this up on Steam, and when we're done, you'll be able to apply the concepts to other similar games. Many point-and-click adventure games have successfully translated their controls from mouse to joystick. Take a look at Monkey Island as an example. In this case, it works really well to use an analog joystick as a mouse, as the controls are pretty simple. You point, and you click. There's no dragging or other gestures that are required. However, for a game like The Room, it's a little different. What makes this game fun is that the player is required to figure out puzzles that are often based on interacting with objects. Dragging or other gestures, which are commonplace on a mouse, don't work very well when a joystick is used to move a cursor. However, by using a controller that has a gyro for motion controls, we can simulate a mouse in a more natural way. The often overlooked gyro in a controller is less precise than a mouse, that's true, but it happens to be precise enough for these types of games. For this video, I'll assume that you're familiar with Steam on PC, specifically Big Picture Mode, and you have a controller with a gyro that supports motion controls. PlayStation's DualShock 4 and DualSense work great here, and most Nintendo Switch controllers will as well. None of the current or past generation Xbox controllers support gyro. As you watch the video, please be sure to check the video description. I'll keep it updated with any relevant information. So let's get started. When I set up a controller config for a new game, I like to start from a blank slate. I use a controller template to start from scratch. I recommend creating one so you can use it in the future. Open up Steam's controller config and remove all of its bindings. You can then save it as a blank template for your specific controller that you can use in the future. With the blank controller template created, let's make sure it's selected and then we'll start our game. With the game running, the first thing we need is mouse control. Let's open Steam's controller overlay and add the gyro as mouse. Let's also set up some of the mouse mapping's detailed settings. The sensitivity and acceleration are a matter of preference, which you can figure out from trial and error. I know what I like and I'm picking them here. The cursor control is working well, but I do notice that after moving it a little bit, it can get off-centered, which is common for gyro controls. So let's use a button for recentering the cursor. I'll use the right shoulder button for this, as it's similar to some Switch games I've played. We'll map this to move the mouse cursor to a specific location. In this case, it will be the center of the screen. The screen's coordinate system for input isn't well documented at the moment, but I managed to find out that it ranges from 0 to 32,000 on both axes. That means the center point will be 16,000 on both the X and Y, so let's input that now. We don't want the cursor to snap back to the previous position, so we need to turn that off as well. With that set up, let's test it out. It's working really well. With the cursor off to the side, I can press the R1 button to snap it back to the center, matching my hands. This can take a little getting used to, but after some time it just feels natural. Alright, so we've got the mouse control set up pretty well, but now we need a way to click. So let's add that as well. I'm going to use the square button for the left mouse click, but you can pick whatever's comfortable for you. With that set up, now I can click in the menus. One of the first things the game does when setting up a profile is asking you to type in a name. The default Steam button shortcut for opening the keyboard is holding the Steam button while pressing the Share button on the PS4 controller, but I want to add that in as a single button press for convenience, so I'll map the Share button to open the keyboard now. With that set up, I can type in a profile name and start a new game. Playing the game's tutorial feels good so far, I can move the mouse cursor easily and recenter it as needed. Zooming in in the game's journal requires double clicking the left mouse button, which is a double tap of the square button for me. I'm able to drag the journal's pages and they feel natural using the gyro. Now I find out I need the right mouse button to zoom out, so let's add that binding now. I'm going to map that to the controller's cross button as that feels natural to me. Now I can zoom back out and continue with the tutorial. 
Pretty quickly I learned that double clicking to zoom in will be used often, so it'd be great to add a single button mapping for that. I'll set it up so the triangle button works as a double click. After binding a left mouse click to the triangle button, I can use the detailed settings to change the button type to repeat. I couldn't find documentation for the repeat rate time units, but I assume it's milliseconds. 32 is roughly two game frames if it were running at 60 frames a second, and this value worked pretty well for me. Testing it out, I'm able to zoom in and out with two separate buttons, and it feels natural. Alright, let's keep going. Interacting with in-game objects and panning the view feel natural and comfortable. Very quickly I discover the in-game lens, which is an important item that will be used throughout the entire game. The lens is a toggle which lets you see hidden items in the game. I know I'm going to be switching back and forth between this a lot. Instead of manually moving the cursor to the icon and clicking it to toggle, it'd be awesome if we could have a single button press that would do that for me. So let's do that. I want to set up the circle button to move the mouse cursor to the icon, click it, and then return the mouse cursor to where it was before. Let's start by adding a binding that moves the mouse cursor to the lens icon's location. On screen, the lens icon is all the way to the right and about the middle point in the vertical. Using the coordinate system of 0 to 32,000 on each axis, this would be roughly 32,000 in the X axis and 16,000 in the Y. However, the icon isn't right on the edge, it's inset a bit. I had already used trial and error to figure out coordinates that work just right, so let's input them. We want to be sure to keep on the return to previous position option as that will allow the cursor to snap back to where it was before. So let's try it out. Pressing the circle button does indeed move the cursor over the icon and letting go returns it to where it was before. This is working great. Next we need to add the mouse click. To do that we can add an extra command to the circle button. We'll make that extra command issue the left mouse click, but it's important to get the timing right here. We first want to move and keep the cursor at the right location, then issue the mouse click, and then let it move back to where it was before. So let's add a fire end delay to the mouse movement. What this does is sets up a delay after first pressing the circle button for the end of the mouse movement. Next, after binding the left mouse click to the second command, We'll set its start delay to a time that's less than the mouse movement ending. This should get us what we want. Pressing the circle button will move the mouse to the correct location, click the left mouse button, and then return back to where it was. Trying it out, it does work, but I noticed that if I'm moving the controller while pressing the circle button, the cursor can still move while it's over the lens icon, meaning it can misclick. So let's update our controls so that the gyro is disabled when we press the circle button. In the gyro to mouse mapping setting details, we can tweak when the gyro control is enabled. Instead of always on, let's change it to be controlled by a button press. And let's make that button press inverted. Instead of pressing a button to enable the gyro, let's press a button to disable it. And by using the same button as we used for the lens mapping, the gyro will be disabled during those actions. Now trying this out, it's working great. No missed clicks and it's very reliable. Playing a little bit more, I realize I need a way to pull up the game's main menu. The escape key will bring up the menu in game, so let's map that to the options button. At this point, I think I have everything I need to play the game, but I have a bunch of unused buttons in the controller. For convenience, we could set up the left and right trigger buttons to serve as right and left mouse clicks. We could also set up the analog joysticks with the joystick mouse mapping so they can control the mouse cursor as well. These could be handy in some games for sustained mouse movement, such as panning the camera around. The touchpad button is also unused. I find this more comfortable than the options button, so let's map that to the main menu as well. The controller config feels good, and I'm comfortable playing the game this way. The most complicated button mapping I set up here was for toggling the lens. I made sure to use the same button to disable the gyro for accuracy. But what if a game has multiple on-screen elements and you want to set up button mapping shortcuts for more of those? Just as an example, let's say we want to be able to click on the first inventory slot, which is on the left side of the screen. 
In that case, what I think is a great way to deal with this is to use a new controller input layer and hold a button down on the controller to shift into that layer. Let's set it up so that we can hold down the L2 button on the controller and then either press circle to toggle the lens or triangle to click the first inventory icon. First, let's remove that the circle button disables the gyro and set it back to always on. Next, let's go to action sets and add a new one. So now we have two action sets. Default is what we've already set up and items is blank. So let's set up a way to change between them. Editing the default action set, I'll configure the L2 button so that starting to press it will switch to the items action set. Now editing the items action set, I'll set up the L2 button so that releasing it will return back to the default action set. So let's try it out. When I hold down L2, the mouse cursor does not move as we switched over to the items action set where the gyro is not configured. When I release L2, I can control the mouse cursor once again as control has returned back to the default action set. So now let's add that the circle button and the items action set will toggle the lens. Unfortunately, there's no copy and paste for button mappings here, so I'll just have to re-input it again. Let's set up the triangle button the same way, but using the mouse coordinates for the first inventory item instead, which I figured out ahead of time. All right, let's try it out. Holding the L2 button and pressing circle will toggle the lens and holding the L2 button and pressing triangle will click on the first inventory item. You can imagine that for a game that might have more on-screen click points, mapping the click points to buttons in the secondary action layer can open up a wide range of possibilities. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it helped you out and gave you some ideas. If this was useful to you, really appreciate it if you consider hitting that like button the way out so more people can find this video. Reminder to check the video description if something new's come up, I'll be sure to edit it in the future. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please do leave a comment. Thanks everyone, take care.